the old days of the West, the big cattle spreads had spring and fall roundups. Then the steers to be sold became a trail herd, pointed for the nearest railhead, often hundreds of miles away. The trail was sometimes tough, with rain, wind, and snow. And sometimes pleasant, with good sunlight. It was that way with the outfit we worked for, my younger brother and I. When we reached the railhead town, we put on a rodeo, for fun, to make a few bets. Ready? to do it. If anybody thinks he can, put your money up where your mouth is. Well, now, this is the sort of thing that makes me glad I'm here instead of someplace else. I got $200 here that says I can ride that horse. That is, Mr. Kraft can count up to 10 seconds. You do a lot of popping off, don't you? I can count. You sure you can ride? Well, this says I can. Cover it. You've overmatched yourself again, kid. You can't ride that on. You just stick around and get surprised. All right, boys, you want in on this? Let's see your money. Twenty dollars a day. Twenty-five. Get your money. Ten. Ten. Just ten. 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 I pick. Okay, turn it loose. No bet, no bet. It wasn't a fair ride. Go ahead and scream. See how far that'll get you. I never got a fair chance. I caught my spur in a shoot gate. I get a re-ride. There's a legal ride, boys. Fair and legal. He loses. <laughs> Take it easy. You were swindled. Don't forget it. I don't forget that easy. Doctor, be careful of him. Hurry. What happened here? Sam Mayhew claimed he got cheated in a riot and hit him. You again, eh? Well, let's go. arguing about it. I got a big belly full of your little brother. He's a wild one. Every time he hits town, it's the same old story. Trouble. This time he was right. He hooked his foot in the chute. You saw him, same as I did. I don't care. Your brother's just got to stop beating up on everybody he don't agree with. A craft isn't hurt bad. Little bump on the head. He'll be good as new in a month. And that's just the length of time your little brother's going to spend in the pokey cooling off. How about you, lawyer Crump? 
You could help the kid if you wanted to. I wouldn't touch that boy with a ten-foot pole. I have to live here. But it was only a little slugging match. Nothing to put a man in jail for a month. Exactly where he belongs. the border into New Mexico. I knew Sheriff Dedrick's reputation. He had a long arm. It's a nice little town, Bill. My name is Steve, remember? I'm Steve Webster. And yours is Tom Blackwell. I don't see why changing our names means so much. The difference is staying out of jail or not. Breaking you up was a crime. All right, all right. You reckon he's in town? I don't know. I hope so. I'd like to settle down someplace. I'm tired of having to change towns every time you start something. Look, Bill. Steve. <laughs> I told you, I'm cured. All right, you're cured. Say, could you tell me where I'd find Ben Murdoch? You looking for work? That's right. They told us at his ranch he was here in town. Over in the saloon. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of him. We can cut our thirst at the same time. We'll do that after we get the job. You mind the horses. Oh, wait a minute. You heard me. I was at Stones River. Cook with the 12th Indians. I wasn't at the Battle of Shiloh. Well, I was at Shiloh, but that wasn't no battle. Battles when two sides fight. There was only one side at Shiloh. Them rebels didn't fight. Which one of you gentlemen is Mr. Murdoch? I am. We hear you're looking for hands. We. My uh, partner and myself. What outfit are you with, last? No outfit particular. We've been working around Abilene. You're looking for a place to fill your belly or a place to work? Place to work, sir. Place to settle down. Any troublemakers? No. Pays 30 a month and found. If you're interested, get on out to the ranch. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Yeah. Hey, 
Got a job, both of us. 30 a month and found. 30 a month? That isn't very much. Well, stop kicking. A job's a job. You saw it. It's a big outfit. Can I get that drink now? Go ahead. Go ahead. Shot of whiskey, please. We come up on them early in the morning. The rebels, they were sleeping. They was always sleeping. <laughs> hey, whiskey. We jumped them and run them back into the Mississippi River. <laughs> them Johnny Rebs ran like yellow turkeys. <laughs> that guy sure loves to flap his big mouth, doesn't he? You referring to me? You're the only one talking, aren't you? I happen to be at Shiloh myself, and the only ones I saw running were the Yankees. You calling me a liar? Well, you had to be to get where you are now. Because you're way past being a liar. Look at here, Reb. Ow! Oh. Get these horses in the alley. Hurry up! What's going on here? This rebel here's been kicking up a ruckus. Let me have him, Constable. I'll show you how we handle rebels where I come from. Some guy talking about Shiloh. Large man? Big mustache? Yeah. That was only Murdoch. It was. Well, you never can tell, can you? I can tell. I can tell right now. You're just a no good spoiled brat. And I'm fed to the teeth with picking up your chips. You making another big brother speech? Nope. I tried to raise you like I thought Dad would. Guess I flunked out. Listen, you've been having the time of your life wet nursing me all these years. You like to tell people what to do. You and your settling down, you and your future. All right, you take that bullhead of yours west and I'll take my future east. One last sermon. If you intend to live by that thing, you'll always find a man who can outdraw you. An empty head and a loaded gun are bad partners. I'm still the fastest draw you ever saw. I taught you, remember? And I've known a fair number of real fast draws. They all got one thing in common. They're all dead. And never draw a gun unless you mean to use it. Good luck. I could have killed you just now. 
No, you couldn't. Tonight? Yes, sir. I want them fed grain and uh, fresh straw in his stall. All right. How much will that be? Well, that'd be two dollars. Fine. Decent place to eat around here? Best in Denver. Globe Hotel, right there. Expensive? It's right expensive. Dollar for supper and a dollar for a room. Much obliged. Sure thing. Steak I've had since I left. Left the. Uh... See ya. I can't find my money. Yeah. Thought I had it in my side pocket. Something wrong? Same old game. I'm afraid I've lost my money. Another freeloader, huh? No, I had enough to pay for supper. You know how old that line is? You saddle bums are all alike. Why the might have beat Mr. your brains out, you cheap tramp? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, uh, look, I'll, I'll wash the dishes. Huh? All right? Oh, the fracas. <clears throat> uh, you just passing through Denver? Yeah. What do you do next? I'll figure that out tomorrow morning. You got a room? No, but my horse has. I'll tell him to move over. Would you like for me to put you up? Why? I like the way you handle yourself. I like the way you're washing dishes when you didn't have to wash your dishes. That ain't all there is to it. I got a proposition. When you're finished, I'll be waiting out in the veranda. Sure. Thanks. My name's uh, John Sutton. I'm Bill Mayhew. You like a job? That depends. Good steady work. A fellow who wanted to might make something out of it. Go on. Well, I live in Central City. <clears throat> I run a livery stable up there. This game leg guy, I don't get around so good anymore. And I got some plans. Might take me away from the stable more and more. Like a fellow like you around to help. You got anything against toting water or even grain sacks? No. You too proud to shovel manure? What's the pay? Two dollars a day. I'll feed you and sleep you. Do you say the job is steady? As steady as you want to make it. 
I think I'm going to like working for you, Mr. Sutton. Welcome home. Shake hands with Bill Mayhew. Whipso Ellis. Howdy. Howdy. Bill's going to work for us. Is that a fact? Yep, he's going to bunk up in the loft with you. You snore? I don't know, I don't think so. If you wake up in the water trough, you'll know. I can't even stand the horse that snores. Once when Elizabeth's got supper waiting. Oh, uh, well, we'd better get on over there, Bill. Come on. I'll see you later. If you will. Well. Come on. Time you came home. Uh, darling, I want you to meet Bill Mayhew, new hand. This is my daughter, Elizabeth. Pleased to meet you, Bill. Pleased to meet you, too. You two get washed up. Supper's ready. Oh, good. This way, Bill. Is this a celebration, or do you eat this way all the time? <laughs> it's the way we eat all the time. Do you like it? All I can say is the next time you hire a man, don't mention the wages. Just carry around a sample of the food. You hear that? Yes, I heard. Thank you. I bet it, too. Well, it isn't often I get a compliment like that. <clears throat> you know, this boy likes food so good, he's even willing to wash dishes for it. When he doesn't have to? <laughs> This'll prove it. <laughs> well, I'm a little bushed from that long ride. I think I'll turn in. That's a good idea, Dad. With Bill around, maybe you can take it a little easier now. <laughs> and if he turns out to be a good dishwasher, so can you. <laughs> good night. Good night. I could get to like this. If I was sure of that, I might add a few more courses to the meals. Seriously, though, it's, it's fun doing it because you want to and not because you have to. Well, it's not exactly man's work. Oh, I don't know. They say men make the best cooks. Why shouldn't they do a little cleaning up afterwards? Well, that's pretty revolutionary talk. You're going to hear a lot more of it if I stick around here long enough. I'd like that. <laughs> I'll have Dad take that out of your wages. As long as she'll take it out of my hide. Man's work. All right, you wash and I'll dry. First the broom over there. Shindig, huh? Yeah. We have them around here every now and then. Schoolhouse? What do they do, dance on the desk? <laughs> no. The fellas go over and take all the desks out, and then on Sunday they put them all back again. I guess they need an extra hand? No, but I do. Oh, sure. I'll help you take them out. Well, that isn't exactly what I meant. This is a one-man job, but, well, it does take two to polka. <sighs> You just got yourself a dancing man. Well, I thought you'd never ask.
What's your game? You name it, stranger. Such a piddle and sum of money doesn't seem worthwhile sitting down for. Doesn't seem worthwhile my taking up your time with either. Name it. Short and sweet. High card for the nine bucks. You cut for me and I'll cut for you, okay? Hey, boys, we got a real sport. All right, sport. This house ran out of luck. You want to go for the 18? Sure. Hey, sports, you've really been kissed by a bluebird. That makes 36 bucks. Try it again. All of it. Well, that makes $72. Again? Sure thing. This is a right nice game. That's $144. Yeah, and it goes on and on and on. Try it again, huh? That makes 288 bucks. You want to quit? Pass the deck. Don't be a sucker. Why don't you quit while the quitting's good? You got to lose sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what he gets this time. Go ahead. Well, that's five hundred seventy-six dollars. One more time. Once more. Only keep your eyes on me and don't run your fingers over the edges of the cards. Understand? Look, Mister, if you got some idea, just do what I tell you and skip the talk. Take a cut. Not on that cut. I told you not to finger the neck. Let's not lose our temper. That's the trouble. I just didn't like the way this gent was fingering the deck. You look like an honest man. You make the cut. I'm Jim Donovan. I own this place. Well, that's all the better. I'm sure you wouldn't want any of your customers doubting the honesty of your card games. Put your gun away. I'll cut for you. Well, you cut so well for me, I'll let you cut for the house. If you don't object. Not at all. Satisfied? Perfectly. Well, why don't you join me in a drink while Rick Cash is in your winning? Wouldn't want you to go away from here bearing any hard feelings towards us. Well, I'd like to drink with you. Always hated leaving hard feelings behind me. What's your name? Tom Blackwell. That was a pretty nervy stunt you pulled. Was it? You know I couldn't afford to let you lose. I was kind of banking on that. Pretty handy with a gun, too. Fast. Could get you into trouble someday. Could get me out, too. What's your line? Anything. Most anything at all.
I'd like to have you folks meet Bill Mayhew. Uh, this is Miss Honeywell, the school teacher, and Sheriff Luke Kimbrough. Right, thank you, Sheriff. Bill's working for me. Well, glad to have you around, Bill. Thanks a lot. Go ahead and dance, Bill. Just grab yourself a pretty girl and cut right in. Well, do you have anybody in mind? Me. <laughs> Didn't believe me, huh? Well, you Texans are always bragging. I wasn't sure. When a Texan tells you something, just double it. You'll have it almost up to normal. <laughs> Evening, Elizabeth. Evening, Randy. Evening. Getting a lot of competition, Mr. Mayhew. I guess that's what I get for bringing the prettiest girl in the territory. At present company accepted. Hey, Jim. Hi, Luke. Shake hands with Tom Black with a new addition to my establishment. Luke Kimbrough, our sheriff. Kind of unusual seeing you around these community dunes, Jim. Well, well, let me stay a minute. I just thought I'd bring Tom over. At that, I guess these school dancing contests are as much my affair as anyone's. Being the biggest taxpayer in town, I better be civic-minded just to see where my money's going to, if nothing else. Who are those men over there? I don't know, the younger fella. Probably a new man working for Jim. Jim who? Jim Donovan. Runs the biggest saloon and gambling house in town. If had my way, I'd run him clean out of the territory. It's like they're having fun. Oh, I've been here a couple of days. My name's Tom Blackwell. My name's Elizabeth Sutton. Two very pretty names. And they belong to a very beautiful dancer. Thank you. You're the type that makes friends easily, aren't you? Well, kind of a methodical man I am. Before I start anything, I always say to myself, now, if the worst thing happens, will it be worth it? And if I figure it is, I go right ahead. That's the way I figured this. What do you call the worst? Oh, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's a small price to pay for dancing with the prettiest girl I've seen since I left Texas. So soon? The rules, I'm afraid. Bill, this is Tom Blackwell. Bill Mayhew. He works for my father. How do you do? Howdy, Bill. Been here long? A couple of days. You? A little longer. He's from Texas, too. I see that. Why don't you show us some of that famous Sutton hospitality and get us some punch? All right. But don't you two fellas tell too many lies about Texas while I'm gone. We better talk. Shoot. You took your old name back, huh? Good name. I'm proud of it. Besides, we're a long way from Texas. I'm keeping mine. It's been lucky for me. I got a mighty good job. Stand to make a thousand dollars a month. Mr. Sutton was telling me something about the guy you worked for. So you finally found a career for yourself, huh? Hired gun hand. For big money, you gotta take chances. It's your funeral. If it is, it's none of your business. This town better be big enough for both of us, Bill, because I'm not giving up that kind of money. What are you two talking about? Oh, like you predicted, just, uh... Wasting time lying to each other about little old Texas. <laughs> I like it better out here. It is a pretty night. Couldn't be prettier. I think we'd better go in, hmm? I wouldn't concern myself too much about him. He's a very nice fellow. 
In my opinion, he's just another quick-tempered Texan. If I were you, I wouldn't get too mixed up with him. I want you to go up to Shad Ewing's place and bring back some horses. Eighteen head. Where are you going to put them? Well, that's the problem. I was hoping Shad would board them for another week or so, but, but he won't. Well, we can't get back here for morning now. Better bring your blankets so I'll get some grub. Bringing them horses back in here, right? There's nothing else to do with them. You call that keeping a secret? Come on, boy. What secret? What's he talking about? You ever get bit by an armadillo? No. No, the fellow once that did. Nosiest man you ever seed. Always asking questions. Lost his thumb up to here. Armadillo snapped it right off. Hi. Hi. So you recovered, all right? Didn't you expect me to? Well, I don't know. With all the fellows at the dance trying to wear you out, I still think you should be more careful about who you go outside with. I thought we had that all out at the dance. Maybe I'm taking too much for granted. About what? About you and me. Maybe you're trying to make things move too fast, Bill. All right. When a fellow sees something worth working for, he just likes to win, that's all. You've got lots of time. Stop moving. Let's get going. Expected him to come and get him last week. Ain't you never been busy? Owes me a week's board bill for 18 head. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him. You know, I'm not by nature a curious man, but I can't help wondering about what Ewing said. What is Sutton gonna do with all these horses? Is it again the law for a man to like horses? Oh, well, not this many. He bought some in Denver, too. Maybe he's going to start a stagecoach shortly. Stagecoach, huh? From Central City to Denver, maybe. But that's a legitimate enterprise. Of course it is. And why all the secrecy? He don't want Jim Donovan to find out. Oh, Donovan? Oh, Sutton's heading for trouble, all right. I told him that. Well, if we get a bed down the river by nightfall, we better hide tail. Let's tell them now and get it over with. Get you close to the ranch. We'll wait till morning.
one of them is man. It has to be. You reckon he knows already? He ain't just the horses for the fun of it. This is sure gonna be a wallop to something. And if we get him back? Yeah, and how are you gonna do that? With bird calls? We'll round him up. I'm too old for that kind of foolishness. You're not that old. I saw you haul yourself out from one of those cars with a gun in your hand. Keep him pinned down. Man. Yeah, yeah, I know him, Pecos Larry. But he ain't exactly what you'd call a social friend. Who are you working for? Answer me. I just like to play with horses. Should be two. Where is he? Right here. Freeze. Those are guns. On your face. Spread eagle. Well, now, if you ain't full of tricks, keep on and I'm going to wind up liking you. Get some rope. Tie him up. Yeah. All of you work for Jim Donovan? Yeah. I told you we should have kept going, but you want to be a hero. Oh, shut up. Big George kept going. He didn't want to be a hero. Will you shut up? We'll tie him up nice and leave, and leave him here till we get back, eh? Huh? Tell you how to learn to tie knots? No. Nope. Ever serve in the wind jammer? No. I did. Never forget the time in Australia. Tied up the ship so tight she pulled half of the dock out to sea. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no story. It's a fact. It ain't a fact. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Anything I can do for you? Well, you're going to settle an argument between Big George and me. Who loves to argue, Big George? <laughs> He's never right. <laughs> well, if I can, I... Well, Big George and a couple of boys were riding down the valley this morning, and they ran into a horse stampede. Said they saw a whipsaw, and that uh, fellow you brought from Denver with the herd. How many horses did you see? Eighteen head. Yeah, well, I said the only reason a man would want that many horses would be if he was going to start a stagecoach line. But well, since you're not going to start a stagecoach line, I said those couldn't be your horses. Well, who is right, Big George or me? <laughs> well, I'll be doggone if you didn't finally win an argument. Drinks are on me, Big George. Donovan. He stampeded those horses. But how did he find out? And how does he find out anything? No, Dad. It's the only way to handle him. I don't care about Donovan. Donovan! 
something? I'm kind of silly, don't they? How did it happen? You ever been in a stampede? How did he get the horses back? Can't figure it out neither. He just stood out there a snorting and they come a running from everywhere. <laughs> I appreciate this, Bill. I sure do. Sorry, Mr. Sutton. I appreciate it too, Bill. I figured Donovan would find out sooner or later. He just found out sooner, that's all. It means trouble. Big trouble. Why would Donovan want to stop a stagecoach line? Because it'd make money. And anything that makes money, Donovan wants to run. And we'd make money too. Lots of gold back in the hills. But a stagecoach is legal property. A man's got a right to protect his own property. If he wants to fight, let's give it to him. You want to take on half that fight for half the profits? You just got yourself a partner. Well, we hit the herd like you said. Then we scattered. But this one had to shoot somebody, as usual. This time he found someone a little too tough for him. Came up on him from behind. Two of them. Two of them. You shouldn't feel so bad about it. He was just too good for you. I thought you were a big man around here. Any doubt in your mind? Some. You're not thinking very good for a big man. Wanting to kill a man on your side. On my side? Yeah, your side. He's going to get the stagecoach line running, isn't he? Oh, well, why don't you let him get it running and then take it over? No fuss, no bother. You're a bright boy, Tom. You are for a fact. <laughs> Suppose you tell me what you found out about Garrett. Well, he's got about a hundred head of three-year-olds. They look pretty good. Well, you're a bright boy. Go buy him. Buy him cheap. How cheap? Well, I offered him $30 a head for some poorer stuff a couple of months ago. He only laughed at me. Said he could get five times that amount by taking him to the mines himself. Well, he tried that. Lost every steer. He ought to be in the proper frame of mind now to do business. Take Big George and Pecos Larry with you. Garrett's got a nasty temper. I don't need a bodyguard. Do what I tell you and don't be so cocky. Man works for me, does what he's told, and don't waste my time arguing. The only reason I mention it is because three witnesses are better than one in case there's trouble. All right, I'll take them. Not that there'll be any use. You figure you can get those way stations set up in a week's time? I hope so. We've got it laid out. It shouldn't take much longer. Well, you've done awful well with it so far, Bill. Let's hope it turns out the way we got it planned. Your friend's getting up in the world. My friend? I never laid eyes on him before the other night. Ah, uh, it's funny how a man will lie when there isn't any need for it. I know a Texas rig when I see one. And it's more than a coincidence when two of them wind up in the same town. Particularly when both horses have been branded with the same iron. What did you and Tom do if you had to leave Texas in such a hurry? Does it matter? Well, I ain't a prying man. I ain't wanting to get this partnership off on the wrong foot, either. Whatever you want to tell me, Bill, will stay right with me. He's my brother. Got quite a temper, Tom has. Last time he got in trouble, I broke him out of jail. Yeah, I figured he was a wild one, all right.
I'll do all the talking. All right, big man. Howdy, man. Is your husband home? Oh, howdy, Garrett. Shade cold today. What do you want? Well, I heard you had some steers to sell. I came to make a deal. You buying for Jim Donovan? Yeah, that's right. I swore I'd shoot the next Donovan man who set foot on my land. Now, I'm giving you ten seconds to get off. Now, wait a minute. Yes? Come on, Pegas. I don't scare that easy, big man. You ought to talk some sense into your husband. Get away from here and leave us alone. I should have killed you. Gun crazy. Eight little stitches they took in his head and you should have heard him yelling. It hurt. It hurt. <laughs> Did you ever have eight stitches taken in your head? I want you to go down to the jail and give yourself up. Give ourselves up? I'm turning the three of you in. Swearing out a warrant and everything. Now wait a minute, Jim. Now, don't get excited. Garrett shot at you first, didn't he? That's right. Well, now, why not let the sheriff know that you shot back in self-defense? Well, how long may I have to stay in jail? Oh, until he goes down and talks to Garrett. A couple of hours, I'd say. Yeah? What if Garrett tells a different story? We'll cross that bridge and we come to it. You're learning. You mind telling me what you're doing, Tom? No, oh, it's a soft wall. It's a handy thing to know. Well, why? Donovan's getting us out pretty soon. Now, well, for future reference. <laughs> Keep the crybaby quiet. Well, he hurts. Well, he's gonna hurt some more if he don't shut up. You heard me quiet. Let's go, Tom. Sheriff back? Not yet. Tom here's got himself a visitor, a lady. I thought you'd be more uh, comfortable in here. Thanks, Ben. It was nice of you to call on me, Elizabeth. I just heard about it a few minutes ago. What happened? What'd you hear? That you shot Garrett. Well, he shot at me first. I had to protect myself. He's not hurt bad. I made sure of that. But you're in jail. Why? Well, I came here of my own free will. I was... It's nice to know you're worried about me. I was kind of hoping our little meeting at the dance would lead to bigger and better things. The only reason I'm here is because Bill's out of town, or he'd be here himself. Sure nice to know that everybody's worried about me. 
Anything that happens to you is Bill's concern. Why? Because we're both from Texas? No. Because you're brothers. Bill told you that? No. Dad guessed it. Bill didn't deny it. Tom, listen to me. You've got to pull away from Donovan. You've just got to. Why do I got to? Because you'll get into trouble, and, and then Bill will get into trouble. Look, Bill's Bill, and I'm me. I worry about me, and I let him worry about himself. There are other ways to make money. Not this much. Then you ought to be man enough to take less somewhere else. You know, I can't figure out if you're talking like a sister, a sister-in-law, or just a real true admirer. Stop it! When Bill comes back into town, you better tell him to send a woman to do his work. What'd you find out? Garrett admits he threatened you and shot first. You know something? He was trying to kill you. He needs some shooting lessons. This is the way it lays out. The first stop is right beyond Putnam here. Only Mrs. Dover. Got two grown boys and a big barn. Forty dollars a month. That's good. What about Grub? Oh, well, she'll feed us. Food's good, too. I can vouch for that. We ferry Antelope Creek here. It's dry now, but it fills up in the winter. Man named Wittenberg. Ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Nice stop here at Holtzville. We stay at Mansion House. You remember that? We stopped there on the way out. Yeah, I remember. If we leave there at seven o'clock in the morning, we ought to make Denver one o'clock the same day. Well, you've done a good job, Bill. A fine job. Thanks. Did you get the Concord? Yeah, stored in Bill Norton's barn a couple of miles out. And we can distribute the horses to the relay stations tomorrow. And on Wednesday, you can pull out bright and early for Denver. The sooner the better. I'll leave now and get a bite. Uh, I saved the best thing for the last. What's that? Talk to the United States Commissioner for the Territory. Put in application for a mail contract. Bill, we're going to get a government mail contract. That's great. This is great. I'll see you later. Hey, that horse of yours all tuckered out. Never seen a horse in Tucker. I was in kind of a hurry. He was in a hurry. He must have. Elizabeth. Well, what do you know? Fine. Everything's good. Stagecoach line gets started on Wednesday. Oh, Bill, that's wonderful. Why don't you get cleaned up and I'll fix you some supper? Oh, that can wait. I brought you something from Denver here. Red silk. Oh, Bill, it'll make a beautiful dress. It was the general idea. But why? Well, lots of reasons. The first one is, pretty as the stuff is, you'll make it look even prettier. And the second one is, I, I, well, I just hope to catch your eye with it. Oh, thank you. It's, it's lovely. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Bill, your brother shot a man. Who? A rancher named Ed Garrett. Argument over cattle buying. Kill him? No. Or is he now in jail? No. Donovan got him out. Come on, I'll fix your supper.
What's on your mind? Here you shot a man. Self-defense? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you. Doesn't make any difference. Next one will be easier, you know. You ought to know. That's why I'm here. Look, I know you were only a kid, but you remember as well as I do. What you don't remember is knowing you've killed a man, self-defense or not. They throw you in the cooler for about a year for that and let you think it over. So don't start preaching to me. We're all through with that. All right. If I make you a nice clean deal, will you listen? Well, if it's money, I'll listen. Just because blood's thicker than water, is all they say. I'm half partners with Sutton. Why don't you come to work for us? I'll give you half of my half. You uh, think that'd reform me? Will you do it? Sure. You don't offer me the deal because you thought I could help. You're just doing me a big favor like always. You're just being your noble big brother self. Well, I don't like people who are noble, especially you. So get this straight. You live your life and I'll live mine. Now get out of here. Why don't you watch where you're going? That's my business. July or just the day we saw the stagecoach line? about your line, figured it'd be more safe for you to take it than for us to haul it over the mountain. We'll take it for you, Mr. McGovern. Take full responsibility, of course. Full responsibility all the time, it's in our charge. But you better get it down here in a hurry. We're leaving pretty quick. Mm, got it right here in the bottom of this green sack. Pull. Pull inside, we'll help you unload it. Do you realize what that means, taking responsibility for that gold? We're running a stagecoach line. Responsibility's part of it. We use that gold, it'll cost us everything we got. We won't lose it. All right. The governor turned the gold over to him. They're unloading it now. Get Tom. When he gets here, you know what to do. Yeah. We'll hit him on that first trip out. Well, will wreck him. They'll be laughed right out of the territory. We've got to have some more help. We can't handle it by ourselves. This isn't going to be that kind of a holdup. Tom? Both won't you?
Don't tell me you're going to send me out in another wild goose chase. Are you tired of being a cattle buyer? Well, I'm going to be. That is, if you don't start giving me a price I can work on. Yeah, you've been touchy lately. Why don't you have a cigar and cool off? I just wanted to defang you before we had a little talk. I know why you didn't draw when Bill Mayhew slugged Pecos. The guy's your brother. Funny how information gets around. Well, I have a proposition that concerns him. There's a lot of gold dust going out on that stage. I want it. And you're going to get it for me. Well, now, I'd be real happy to help you. Should I ask Bill to uh, drop it off down in front, or would you like me to go down and pick it up? You're going to write him a little note telling him to come and see me. And if he wants you to stay alive, he'll come and talk to me. What makes you think he cares what happens to me? I'm a great judge of human nature. Write the note. Bill, I've put my foot in the good this time. Jim Donovan says if you don't drop around and see him, you're going to be mine as a brother. I'm in a mess I can't get out of without your help. And don't get any bright ideas. Just do what Donovan says. Tom. Elizabeth! Read this. When did you get this? A moment ago. Kid gave it to me. Bill, this sounds serious. Tom would make it sound away. Otherwise, he'd be afraid I wouldn't come. Has Tom ever asked for help before? Has he ever come right out and begged for it like he's doing here? No. Well, then there must be a good reason for it. I don't think he's the type that scares easily. Maybe I better take a look. Let me down, Bill. What do you want? A governor's gold dust you're carrying to Denver. No dice. You know, in the short time he's been with me, your brother's become a valuable asset to my organization. <laughs> I've become attached to him. It would grieve me deeply if he came to any harm. What if you do get the gold? Give you both 24 hours to clear out of the territory. What about you? Haven't you got anything to say? Why? There's no noble blood in me. Not a drop. That's the way it is, Bill. Oh, I know you'll keep your word. You don't. But I will. I don't expect any trouble from you two, because you'll be in it as deep as I am. They'll blame you for the ghost's disappearance. All right, you can have the gold. It won't be easy, though. John Sutton's riding gun guard. It'll be easy. Practically painless. All you've got to do is follow orders. Oh, there you are. Is Tom all right? 
you ever hear of a bad penny not turning up? What was the matter? It's been gambling heavily, that's all. Donovan was holding a lot of his IOUs. I promised to make him good. Oh, Phil. All this gold, I'm getting a little worried. Let's get it aboard and get rolling. This may be the beginning of great things, Dad. I'm proud of you. Well, I had a lot of help. Oh. Where do I come in? Central City Sheriff. Sutton and Mayhew deserve a lot of credit. They had enough civic pride to want to bring the outside world into us. Maybe we'll start booming now. Yes, sir, they deserve a lot of credit. Here. You guys go in alone. You won't have any trouble. Bill Mayhew's expecting you. Yep, see you later. Here. Here. Some grub ready? Yes, indeed. We go on each, and I'll help with the horses and look after the boxes. Good. You got room for an express box to Denver? I might have. Where is it? Over there. You're Jocelyn, aren't you? Yeah. Gentlemen, describe you. Bring him over here. said he had special plans for your brother before you find him in an alley. You don't play it straight. You going back there now? Yeah, as soon as I pick up Pete. Put that other box in the boat. Son, you got a good horse I could borrow? Sure. Sign him up for me, will you? Okay, 
heard of Oh, that's good. You go and eat now. We gotta keep on schedule. This is as far as I go. You know the road the rest of the way. You won't have any trouble. What's the matter with you? We're partners, John. You'll have to trust me. There'll be some men waiting for you at Big Pine Creek. They'll be friends. I should have been here by now. Looks like a double cross, boss. I don't think so. What are you doing here? I just came back to see you kept your part of the bargain. Did they get the box? Just like you planned. Come on, let's go. Not till I get the box. They're coming. You mean you gave us the gold just like that? Yeah. That's the price of your life. You chump. Did you really think they'd have killed me? That's what the man said. We'll split tomorrow. Break this open. What's this? Stand easy. Dealing with such a smart man, Mr. Donovan. I couldn't be sure you wouldn't kill him. So we've got our stagecoach line, he's got his life. You've got some rocks. the other one.
you were right, I couldn't. Come on. We got work to do. Ah! Ah! 